Hello everybody, this is Budridge. Um, okay, um, so I've been testing some styles here and finding some good icons for the menu here. Looks uh, really friendly, whatever. But this video will not be about me making this uh, homepage. Uh, instead, I thought I would like to show you how to uh, how to use this tailwind thing that I have been uh, hinting about you know I haven't really showed you how to install it with Hugo and the way I use it here because I, I have I think I have found uh, a, a kind of a cool way to, to use tailwind CSS uh, together with Hugo so this video I will try to keep it focused uh, this is like take three because I always get uh, in a bad mood when I install packages with npm which is something we need to do in this video but we can go get through it we can do it let's see I have created a page here with some notes uh, which I will add somehow either I will create like a small github repo uh, we can see this is uh, the repository that I based my uh, setup on. Uh, it's created by a guy called uh, Bud Parr here. Uh, found it through the Hugo uh, community, the Hugo uh, forums here. And here is a, a simple uh, a boilerplate for, for making a, a Hugo project uh, with Tailwind enabled but I have taken this one step further and um, I also use uh, Hugo's uh, SAS uh, capabilities and also I'm, I'm starting to get a cold so I might ha have uh, one of my infamous uh, sneeze attacks uh, any moment who knows I will try to, to go away uh, from, from the microphone if uh, <laughs> Uh, if I feel it's close, uh, sorry, sidetrack. Uh, I have taken it a step further than this setup because I also use uh, SAS in my setup, uh, uh, Hugo's internal SAS uh, conversion thing. And I don't use this post CSS import uh, because I, I think it's not needed when you use this SAS uh, uh, method since SAS has its own import thingy blingy. Um, but we'll see if I do one of these repos myself maybe that's a good idea to just create like a a, a, a bare bones repo like this but uh, I, I have um, uh, borrowed quite a lot uh, uh, from this but it's it, it's like it's it's not nothing super complicated or, or weird I will show you here so uh, I have created this um, um, uh, Hugo project here, called, I called it uh, Tailwind Demo and uh, it's, a, it's a completely empty project, I, I just added a couple of files, all the files are, are described in this uh, document here uh, but this whole assets directory, that doesn't exist uh, by default. I also added just a test post here with some dummy uh, markdown. Uh, so we have something to, to test. Um, uh, added uh, uh, right now, th this is just uh, the default Emmet uh, uh, HTML boilerplate, except for this stuff, which we remove now. So uh, to not spoil this video uh, I have also added this is uh, the special file this is also different from from bad, bad parts this is where I uh, convert the SAS into CSS and inject it in, into the tailwind and then send it into the post CSS and then blah 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 uh, and I will uh, go into detail all of these steps here because it might be interesting and, and also enlightening uh, how, how these uh, assets and, and pipes and stuff works in, in uh, Hugo. Uh, here we have the node modules, let's delete it and install it again and see if I can uh, keep keep a good spirit while doing so. Because uh, that's, uh, that's probably the biggest drawback here. Also I think this resources directory is something that's created when you generate a site, I think we can delete that. 
and uh, the public directory is already deleted. So let's pretend that this is a completely new uh, Hugo project that I have created with uh, the command, you know, Hugo new site and then uh, Tailwind demo or something. Uh, that will create a directory with the, the, the basic uh, files you need for, for a starting a Hugo project. So let's say I've done that here and that's something you could do as well. Uh, after we have done that, uh, enter that directory. So there, now I am in Tailwind demo here. Now we need to initialize uh, npm. Uh, and first uh, make sure that we have npm installed so you can search for it with your package manager search for npm and we can see here that I have it installed uh, a package manager for JavaScript so it's actually the node package manager a node is like a standalone uh, v8 the, the, from Google and the Chromium project the Chrome browser have uh, this excellent JavaScript interpreter called V8 and and Node is more or less a standalone uh, uh, yeah that V8 component the JavaScript interpreter uh, standalone so you can execute JavaScript without the browser or anything you can execute them uh, in, in a terminal for instance uh, because these uh, Tailwind uh, stuff is actually a JavaScript uh, package. Wait, it's it, it's fine. It's not. Um, uh, we will actually use this uh, Tailwind stuff uh, as a JavaScript tool because for some reason they have written this in in JavaScript. Probably because of this post CSS thing here that that makes it easy to 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 work with with uh, uh, CSS and and do. Uh, post operations on them. So we will need to install at least these three packages are mandatory post CSS, post CSS CLI and Tailwind CSS but we will also install purge CSS I, I would say this is also mandatory when you're using uh, Tailwind and auto prefixer is just good stuff to have wh when we while we're at it you know it, it, it's a great uh, uh, post CSS uh, uh, package uh, and we will look into quickly what they do and, and stuff. It's not nothing too complicated, as I said. Uh, so to initialize and uh, this uh, uh, directory or project here uh, for npm, we do n npm uh, init dash y, and the y here is just to uh, say yes to everything. So we get, uh, and all it does is it uh, writes this package JSON here to, to the same directory. And you need that to, to install the, the packages uh, correctly here to, to this file. When we have done that, uh, we will uh, install these packages here. Oh, I don't know what happened there. So, at full human slash pull CSS dash purge CSS auto prefixer post CSS post CSS dash dash CLI and tailwind CSS and this is important tailwind CSS not tailwind without the CSS here then you will get another broken package and you will get like uh, warnings from npm uh, saying that you have like uh, installed a virus or something it's, it, it, it's not fun uh, and then it will fetch uh, these five packages uh, and uh, maybe some dependencies. Uh, well, they had 290 dependencies it looks like here. So now we have installed uh, this stuff here to our project, a bunch of JavaScript bloat here. Um, but as I said, this is only uh, for our, our local uh, developer tool chain so to speak no it, it will not uh, inject any javascript whatsoever into the site itself so it doesn't bloat the site it's if you don't tell anyone they will not know that you are using javascript because you just use it on your computer and i know that's uh, bad enough but whatever you will see it's worth it in the end 
I wouldn't show you this if if I if it wasn't wor worth it. But uh, trust me, I really don't like this. And I don't like npm, I don't like JavaScript uh, packages either. But it works fine. Okay, we have that installed now. Uh, next, uh, we need to initialize Tailwind as well. We do that with this command here, npx uh, tailwind init. And you can add uh, a destination for, for the file. And if you have this uh, directory, uh, assets CSS, it, it's not there by default, but you can create it here with this. Then you can just do npx tailwind init. And then npx is like execute this uh, tailwind uh, command here. And all that does is create this tailwind config file for us, which we need. And I also recommend doing uh, the same command, but pass um, also the full uh, option here. And then name the, the file something else, uh, like tailwind full.js or something. This is just for reference, but then oh, it didn't work with the path there. It's Okay, it created created it here with the default name. Maybe you need to add the path path before here or maybe here. I, I don't know, but here you can see this is completely different from from this. Uh, uh, this is a blank uh, uh, config file, and here you get the full config file with all default uh, uh, parameters uh, in it already, and that that's really good to have. Uh, as a reference when, when you want to customize uh, your own config you can see how, how the defaults look and, and it becomes easier to, to customize your your own uh, values later so just uh, a little tip there do that command as well but I, I like to move this to this assets directory so tailwind uh, move that to assets slash css tailwind dot full.js and now it's here cool and then uh, create a bunch of files and the I, I have already done this um, and it's uh, three of those files are uh, here I have created a post CSS directory here in the assets directory here uh, they are configs that we will need to pass to post CSS when we use these different uh, Modules. It is possible to combine these into so so instead of, of uh, because it will mean that we will execute post CSS maximum three times. But I like to keep them separate like this because then you can experiment with them and, and move move the the modules around. You you will see what I mean soon. But uh, it's probably slightly better performance wise to to combine them into one uh, uh, config. But whatever. Um, and when that is done, um, uh, we create this. Uh, uh, yeah, we also create the SAS file, which is uh, uh, only one file is needed, but you can add as many SAS files as you want. I create them here in the SAS directory. Uh, name it underscore index dot scss. Right now, I just have an import my stuff here, and that means it will look for a file named my stuff.scss here, which uh, I also have here. And all uh, content of that file is, is a normal vanilla uh, CSS uh, rule here to set the, the body background color to pink. So, create, we need to create that as well. And now, let's uh, look at how this works. Uh, we could Start by stopping this server and starting this server because I, I, there I stopped the old Hugo server, so to speak. Um, or you know what? Let's let's do that in this terminal. Hugo server disable fast render capital D. So now uh, this uh, page or the, uh, our test site here uh, is running in the server. So let's open 
that in a new tab here. Yeah, let's go to, to the main index site. There is nothing there. We, we only have one uh, uh, page here in this test layout called test inside uh, posts here. So posts slash test should bring up this test uh, document. And by default, uh, there are some basic styling and this, this looks different depending on the browser. This is like Pale Moon's uh, default uh, style. So you can see it, it already takes care of a lot of things here for us, like uh, setting uh, lists and, and stuff, you know. You already got some basic uh, uh, rules. So this, in one way, this is enough. I think I've talked about this before. Um, But to uh, add our um, weird little uh, thing here, I have created uh, its own module actually called uh, CSS.HTML in the partials uh, layouts uh, directory here. Let's have a look at that. Here first I initialize a variable or declare a variable called tailwind base and tailwind base uh, will be the content of the resource uh, css slash tailwind dot css and that file only contains these two lines and the rest here is commented out with some information about what will happen here because uh, if you know anything about uh, tailwind and maybe have watched those uh, uh, screencasts on, on the tailwind uh, uh, site uh, then you know that to, to just start the project you should add these three uh, uh, commands or what to call it in, in a CSS file like this and these will later uh, when you pass this to uh, post CSS um, it will together with Tailwind it will uh, expand these uh, to a lot of uh, uh, custom small CSS classes uh, and also, uh, you can add your own uh, uh, styles here. Uh, for example, I wanted to style uh, uh, links. I could add like a, a style sheet for that here. So, color colon uh, I don't know green. Uh, that would style all the links. Right now the CSS is not activated because in our uh, HTML, this is the, the HTML, it doesn't uh, uh, read any CSS files at all, so nothing happens here when I add this rule here. But you can add rules like this in normal Tailwind as well. But as you can see, I have added this comment here and uh, also commented out this last uh, uh, Tailwind utilities uh, command here. So. The first thing I do is is only to to um, uh, take those take that file with only those two lines and and uh, put it in a variable called Tailwind Base, and then I, I create a variable containing uh, the SAS, but uh, um, uh, translated into CSS here, and this is done with with Hugo's built-in SAS converter here which uh, is very fast so so that's good and we don't need any extra thing for for taking care of this sas things here and then i uh, also create a variable called tailwind tail which which only contains that last line that were commented out here in 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 the config and then i simply just concatenate that because here we can add a uh, normal css in between here but you cannot add uh, work with SAS here by default. But if we convert the SAS first and then inject it here, uh, then it will, then that will work, uh, uh, and that is pretty cool. So when I got these uh, variables, I just um, concatenate them here with resources con concat into uh, one single CSS file and store that file in a variable. And then I pass that variable to post CSS here and store the content again here. And now wh wh when it have passed through this pipe here, then the Tailwind uh, classes will be expanded. So this is a gigantic uh, style sheet because 
Tailwind by default have uh, over 40 or about 40,000 lines of uh, CSS classes. It's a very large CSS document. Mm, but that is kind of the point. Uh, then uh, we do a test here to see if we are running the site uh, as a server, which we are doing now, you know, pre uh, uh, to preview the code. So every time we change something on the site, it updates uh, the browser window and stuff. If that is, a, is the case, then we just uh, fingerprint the, the, the style sheet, meaning we give it a, a, a completely unique uh, name, file name. So, uh, and that, that is a process that doesn't uh, take any resources whatsoever. And then, then we uh, add this link. So, so that's the only thing that this template does. It prints this HTML. All, all of these uh, uh, double handlebar uh, uh, things here. Those are Hugo template uh, language uh, stuff here that will never get. Uh, they will not not be 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 part of the rendered HTML. So the only thing it does is printing either this line or this line. And this is if we are not running it in a server, then it will uh, send it to Pose CSS uh, for the auto prefixer and the purge CSS. An auto prefixer that just adds a bunch of extra uh, classes, so uh, everything will work as good as possible in in as many browsers as possible. So so that's just a good thing to do and saves you a lot of work. So you don't have to do that stuff yourself. You just have to write one single class, and then this will uh, take care of, of, of compatibility things for you. Uh, but the purge CSS that is. Um, that will look at the CSS. Uh, we can see here that, that the Perch CSS, I believe, have the most complicated uh, Pose CSS config. The other ones are, are very simple here. But the Perch CSS, uh, you need to give that a filter so it knows uh, what kind of classes to look for. And then uh, you tell it where to, uh, which HTML documents to search. And here, I actually have the public directory here. Maybe that's uh, stupid. We don't need that. I think this is enough to just give it the layouts directory here. But if you have more HTML files uh, that will be uh, rendered here on the page, then you should add those locations as well here to, to this uh, uh, list here. <coughs> uh, and Perch CSS will, will um, crawl through all, all of those uh, HTML files. Right now it's just these two. And then it will look for <coughs> classes in, in those files. And now when I think about it, maybe we should, or maybe, no, maybe not. It will look for, for, for classes in those files <coughs> and remove them from uh, the, the, the compiled CSS. Uh, or it will remove everything in the CSS that is not used in the HTML documents. <clears throat> so those 40,000 lines will become like five lines, which is a big difference. Uh, well, kind of five lines. It will also add uh, some default CSS and stuff. You will see soon. So that is how this thing works. So all we need to do is to uh, uh, read this template uh, in our head here and, and then it will insert this link rel because this is what you normally write in, in, in the head part of, of your HTML. So maybe here and I like to use this uh, command, Hugo command, uh, partial cached uh, and then uh, the, the template css.html and then you need to pass it uh, some something more. Uh, we don't really need to pass the page here, but we do that anyways. But we, you have to pass something. You can you can pass an empty string. I believe that works as well. But whatever. Let's or actually it doesn't work. Whatever. Pass the page. Yeah. And now we can see it. It actually reloaded and everything seems to work here because now the only style we have applied here. We have no classes or styles here. The only thing we have done is, yeah, the link text, as we did here in the Tailwind CSS, the color green here. You can see the links are green. Changing this to blue, then they will be blue, hopefully. 
it is a bit slow here. I will get back to this. It's it's uh, it's quite slow to to update the page when you edit the CSS, but you will see it's it's fine. Um, and in um, the SAS directory, we we set the background color to pink here in 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 this variable. So we could change this as well just to show you. Um, and you can also see now that the document doesn't have all those uh, nice styles as it had uh, before we, we enabled the uh, Tailwind here. Uh, now it is uh, almost plain text all of it. Some stuff are bold here for instance, but almost everything is just plain text now. And that is because, let's have a look here at the page source. If we do view page source, here we can see the page source, normal HTML here. But here we can see the, the fingerprinted uh, uh, CSS file. And that is what the fingerprinting means here. It will create this completely unique uh, file name. And that is, uh, uh, I don't remember, I think it's called cache busting or something. It's It makes it much safer for 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 uh, and easier for for the cache to to know which file it is or, or whatever and here we can see at the top of the script or, or the css is a bunch of normalizing um, uh, rules here to, to kind of reset all the elements of of the of the web page and this is uh, this is um, entered uh, by tailwind by default uh, to, yeah to reset everything and we actually want that. Uh, so these classes, they are kind of part of, of the reset. This is not the, the Tailwind stuff. It comes here after the, the in, uh, reset stuff here. Uh, yeah, now Tailwind starts here. And now we have uh, about, uh, now we are at line 742. And this goes on for 40,000 lines of classes that looks like this. Just uh, a class with one single uh, property set in each of the classes. It might look completely insane, but it is actually genius. <laughs> um, so that's why we want to, to shrink this down as much as possible and remove everything that we do because we, we, we right now we don't use any and none of these classes the tailwind classes is used right now so all of this is that's completely complete bloat uh, but let's uh, use some of the tailwind classes to see what they do and stuff or th this will not be a tutorial at all about uh, tailwind or anything but uh, just uh, showing this setup a bit here. So let's say that we add uh, a header here. We could do a h1 um, and then this is my head. <laughs> and we just get this. This is my head, normal text, no nothing at all. And the recommended way to use Tailwind is to is to customize as much as possible directly into the mark markup here. Since we have all of these, it's called utility classes or atomic classes, I believe. Um, so, for example, if we wanted the, this uh, header to be uh, have a large text size, we can do text 6XL. I think that's the largest text size there is. Maybe we want uh, font bold. I don't know something like that maybe we want font serif get this you know maybe we want it uppercase get this and so on uh, maybe we want uh, to make a block out of it and and um, set a background color to green didn't work bg green 500 boink maybe we want want it to be uh, like half take up half of the screen and then it looks like this it's exactly half of the screen size now uh, and so on and then you can set uh, uh, breakpoint specific rules and stuff here it, it makes it really cool you know you can do something like uh, on on uh, medium 
this is on small screen sizes then so, so let's uh, or whatever let's set the breakpoint for for large uh, and then text uh, LG which is uh, quite small text and there now it uh, reverted into that so so the default which is a small screen uh, have 6 XL medium has uh, 6 XL but when it hits the large breakpoint uh, the, the, the text is this you can also change colors on breakpoints and, and all kinds of stuff you can change almost anything on these breakpoints and you can customize the breakpoints as I have shown you in previous videos and stuff so it's it's really really easy to work with this uh, tailwind thing but when you are using Hugo and you get this auto-generated uh, HTML uh, you cannot set any classes here. Sure, you get some uh, automatic uh, IDs for headers here by default uh, but uh, you cannot uh, inject any uh, classes here in a sane way. Uh, so, so the the way we always have done this with Hugo is, is to customize this in a CSS document. So, for example, um, yeah, if we go here to, to Tailwind CSS, the normal CSS here, so to speak, and then we can set the H2 uh, to have... Hmm, I should have made my example here, H2 as well. H2 color uh, red. Now all H2 uh, elements will be red, and these are H2s, you know. Let, but, but let's say that um, our H1 here was also an H2. Now this will also be red, it, uh, the, uh, the, the style sheet will override, override uh, the styles we set here. Uh, but what we really wanted to do was only target the article uh, uh, tags here from the CSS. And then you can do something like this, you know, uh, and close the content here in, in this, like article tags, or, or you could also make a div with a class article or whatever. But let's just make it like this now. Um, and then we can, uh, in the CSS, just uh, expand this selector to art article here. H two, and now this is not red, but these are. Uh, but when you start working with uh, Tailwind, you will notice that, for example, colors here, uh, there there are a bunch of uh, the colors are are not like the the normal. Um, here are the different red. Uh, um, uh, colors here. So red 500, which is like the default red, it looks like this. And uh, the, the lower the number, the lighter the shade is, uh, and the, the higher, the, the more saturated it is. Uh, and all colors have this here. Uh, but they are, um, they are set uh, and hand-picked, the, these ones. And maybe, maybe you set that uh, uh, title color there to uh, um, let's set it to text uh, red 300 or something oh that's a beautiful red and then you want the same red here for, for this now now the colors are insane I know but whatever uh, but then it doesn't work you know uh, t if you want the same colors here in your CSS uh, you wouldn't have to first go into uh, your Tailwind full CSS here and find okay so this is the uh, 300 red color go to your CSS and set that to this color you know and every time you change and stuff it's you see where this is going uh, but uh, Tailwind have this excellent uh, feature called apply that you can add to, to the CSS files uh, that lets you use uh, uh, already defined classes. So here we can uh, now use uh, text red 300 and then we can delete this.
and that uh, yeah now it didn't make any difference but then we might change it to uh, 600 to have a because it's not that visible here and also these are h2s so uh, I guess uh, they should be like uh, text uh, uh, 5 Excel or something and so on and and, and this is also uh, one of the benefits uh, because normally th this would mean we, we would uh, without tailwind here we would have to write this uh, color uh, this and then uh, font size I believe and then 5 Excel what is that uh, that is probably like uh, 2.5 uh, ems or something i don't know maybe that's smaller yeah it's probably no it's something like that and you can see look up these what, what these uh, sizes really are uh, here we have spacing uh, and so on uh, let's see if we can find that font family font size yeah 5xl is three rems so it takes the the root uh, uh, the font size of the root whatever the, let's not go into those details but it uh, re, you, it's really uh, it, it's much more tedious to write the full css than just write this little thing on a single line here you can you can fit like uh, what otherwise would need like five six ten lines you can fit all of that into one line you know it's uh, it makes uh, the css much more manageable uh, and there's also no problem doing this. You can have two applies here if, if you want to do or more. And then you can have the text size on one line and this on a second. This might uh, have a slight, slight uh, uh, performance uh, impact, but it's, it's almost uh, uh, un unnoticeable. It's worth it when you, uh, instead of having like a line that's uh, too long, I, I prefer to do this when I need to. Or just a group settings whatever uh, but uh, we you know we, we have a lot more uh, HTML tags here we have h3 we have the piece we have the uh, block quotes we have codes we have a, lo a lot of things lists and, and whatever and everything here needs to be styled now when everything is reset that would mean that we would uh, have to write like uh, if we wanted to write a rule for h3 here then we would do something like this maybe we want uh, that to be yellow i don't know and now h3 tags are yellow uh, but this is also uh, not not the most fun thing to do then you would have to do always specify and and what if you change uh, the article uh, you 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 you, you decide to have two article elements and then you name uh, you set a specific class for one of them and stuff you know this is when you want to do something like this instead uh, nest the classes but this is not allowed in in um, uh, default CSS to do something like this it, it might not look like a big deal but but Believe me, th this is this is uh, kind of key. We will probably get an error here now, or it, it it didn't parse it at all. At least we didn't get an error. But if we add this instead to our SAS file, our my stuff SAS here, now it will work. Uh, and this is just a demo that we can use uh, SAS. Uh, with tailwind uh, functions uh, and this means you, you can you can use any SAS uh, uh, functionality like mixins variables uh, anything you know uh, and apply here just it, it just magically works it uh, uh, when we convert the SAS to CSS it just ignores this apply so it, it will just send these exact lines to 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 the CSS it's it's uh, really great um, yeah so that's how the whole thing works but still if we look at the the, the source and go and look at the CSS we still have all of those 40,000 lines and yeah another thing it as I mentioned it, it is 
uh, quite slow, you know, to when we modify the, the CSS and, and the SAS here. So if we set font, maybe we can do this also so we can see, because we can actually see how long it takes for it to re-render the page here. Now it it uh, took two about two seconds here, 2000 milliseconds. So if we set the font here to semi-bold, uh, for instance, Yeah, it takes about two seconds, and let's let's set the text size for all, all text on the in the article that isn't uh, uh, styled. So then we could do something like this: apply uh, text um, to Excel, or or maybe Excel is fine, you know. And we get that. Uh, well, yeah, it kind of got weird there because it. Ah, forgot the semicolon. There. Now it's a little bit bigger, uh, the, the, the rest of the text here. But still, 2.2 2 .2 seconds. But if we go into the uh, markup instead here, and set the text uh, of the article here, text uh, to Excel. We'll see 21 milliseconds it takes now when you set it directly in the in the markup it's it's like com instant it's extremely fast because all the css is uh, uh, generated it just updates this uh, single markup thing and hugo is much uh, more efficient with that and and yeah of course it's it, it's much less uh, work uh, to, to do this and all the CSS is already there, you know, it's already, we already got our 40,000 lines of, of classes, so we, we don't need to recompile it, we got, we, it's already there. Um, I don't think I mentioned that also, uh, or did I, uh, that I include this as a partial cache here, and that means that, that you can also do this. Now we will not see any difference whatsoever, since we are just just using uh, a single uh, page here but what is really happening here is it uh, renders all our uh, content pages here so yeah maybe we could or whatever it, it will be such a small difference even if i copy this here but when you're uh, starting to get a bunch of, of posts and, and pages then it will have to generate this css uh, uh, template here compiling the css blah 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 for each and every page um, and that is uh, a little bit uh, uh, resource consuming so so then you can use that partial cache instead instead and then it will only do that once and then it will see every time it, it uh, generates a new template for a new content page it, it will see oh this i have already done this and it's cached cached so then it will take the already finished uh, template uh, I, I think there is some uh, caching done uh, by default in the background, but whatever, it, this this makes uh, a little difference in, in performance. And, and when you know that you don't, uh, because we th there is no difference in the CSS, it will look uh, we will have the same CSS for each page, so so the, it's fine. Um, and also now we only use one of the post CSS modules uh, here, which is Tailwind. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could we, we, we could test it here uh, live and see how that will look like if we add these two uh, here uh, for for the server as well, you will see it will be much slower now to, to update the page because now it will do this purge CSS and and uh, uh, yeah, you can see it's still going here. It, it takes about yeah five five seconds it took now to do this and I can even see maybe it didn't even work here um, not sure if, if, if it saved all the styles here I haven't really looked into this uh, you might need to add uh, so so it doesn't purge uh, the styles that we set in the style sheets you know but whatever that we manually set there and import but that's details that you can look into if you want to. Uh, this is how it works and this is how I have set it up. And, and 
I think the, the, this is the the best thing that has happened uh, in in web dev uh, for me. This uh, tailwind thing here because it makes it so extremely much easier to to style and and uh, uh, work with with, with uh, yeah design and, and layout and stuff in in HTML. For example, if I wanted here now, I could set like a, a padding for for the whole page here. Let's set it padding ten. Ah, of course, now we have the slow, super slow. Maybe that didn't work then just because I wanted to show it. M10. Why is it so fast all of a sudden? Yeah, yeah it's because I'm editing this maybe. <laughs> Whatever. No, 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 it worked. I, I don't know what was going on there with this. Uh, but we could take a look, uh, or maybe we should have done that there. Sorry. Because now, if we look at the CSS now, we should have much less. And it's also minimized now. And remember, this was 40,000 lines. Now it's only uh, uh, 1,700 uh, bytes here. So it's 1.7 kilobytes before it was about 400 kilobytes and most of this is as you can see uh, the, the normalize uh, uh, rules here but it have also added now uh, the let's see if we can find any of those uh, whatever uh, the auto prefixer rules here we can see examples of that WebKit here that is for WebKit browsers. This is not something that was in the initial uh, uh, style sheets. It's added here with the auto prefixer. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to show you this. It's uh, I think it's really cool things, and uh, I will see how I, how it do here if I upload it uh, as a repo to GitHub, so you just can clone it. I think it's possible to do something like uh, Budpar had, had done here, because when if, if you uh, clone this one, uh, sure he uses yarn instead of npm, uh, but it's the same uh, package JSON I believe, uh, and when you have this, I think you can just run npm uh, update or something, and then it will automatically install the, the npm uh, packages. And I, I, I will do something like that, something similar. I will not upload all the NPM modules, of course. Um, if I do a, 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 a repo like this. We'll see. Uh, I add it to, to the show notes. Uh, maybe I don't do this when I up to upload. Maybe there is nothing interesting in the show notes when you see it. Maybe it is. I also have some links here uh, that is kind of interesting. I don't think I've shown you this. Uh, this guy, uh, this is a good article about uh, functional CSS, which is another name for this uh, Tailwind style. Atomic CSS, uh, uh, utility first CSS. Uh, there's, a, there, there's a competitor called Tachyons also. But, I, but it looks like Tailwind will be the winner in that war, at least as it looks like now. But it, whatever. This is a good article because uh, this guy is uh, skeptical about this functional CSS. He, he actually, uh, his conclusion is that uh, uh, if you're going to use this, you should uh, use it in combination with normal CSS. But probably uh, good old fashioned CSS is, is in a way better if you master it. And he also writes somewhere here, I, I, don't, I cannot find it now, but I know that he mentioned something like it's very popular among backend developers to use this Tailwind and functional CSS. And if you read between the lines there, it means that like this is, this is great for people who don't really know how to design because they, they, they get this, uh, uh, everything is pre-filled in, so to speak, because that's an important aspect and, and what I consider being a big uh, benefit that that the tailwind is opinionated like everything is already set like the different uh, sizes and colors and everything of course you can customize this but uh, there uh, w when you set something to to spacing four then you know that spacing eight is twice uh, four but you cannot set like uh, 1.4 
to six or something. something and that's something that you always do when you are uh, don't know anything about design. I know because I uh, that's what I used to do. I just uh, oh this is a magic cool number. Now everything looks fine, and then I change something else, and then that breaks. You know, I don't know if you get what I mean, but. It just creates this nice smooth flow when you're uh, uh, designing and working with it and every it feels like everything is already done but without uh, since you can and also it, it might sound like well the, it takes away all the creativity and stuff but it really doesn't because since it's so easy you can you can go in and fine tune you know everything set like uh, I want some individual top padding on this text but I want the 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 um, letter spacing to be a bit smaller and i want the margin here to have four and here it should be six and you know you can you you start setting all all kinds of things because it's so easy with normal css it would be just too much typing too much flipping around one gazillion uh, css files and uh, you don't uh, remember where you are blah 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 i love tailwind it's great so, uh, and this is my uh, secret setup here uh, that makes it even better now that you can use uh, SAS without any uh, hassle whatsoever. Uh, also, because you, you more or less need this uh, when you are using a static site generator, at least Hugo, to, do, to style the, the all, uh, auto generated markdown. Um, I hope you find the, found this interesting. Um, I say thank you for watching and have a great day.